Marfo just four points, two of three shooting, 11 rebounds, two steals, and an assist. I think it's imperative right now to get Matt Blanc going. He's your leading scorer. He hasn't really shot the ball that much tonight. In the second quarter, he needs to get going. Deflected to Johnson. He's going to back down Marfo. Doesn't work. Powell for three. Gets it to go. A big-time three-pointer ties the game, 42-42. He's their X factor on that team. He's so consistent and so calm, cool, and collected. He's been really great for Ryder. Belong. Taimua three. Wide right. In the last two possessions, there's only been one or two passes. Quinnipiac's really got to move the ball to get the wide open shots here. Now McGuire. Over to Belong. His three-pointer in front of the Bobcat. Bench goes. Yep. 50 to 46, Bobcats by four. I mean, the difference between that three that Matt took and the three that uh, Desi took is clearly the ball movement. They were able to set a fade screen, hit Matt off the screen, he was able to nail it. That's what we need. We call it chin offense or the Princeton offense, and uh, it's been effective for them, but really they need to see the backdoor cuts and the back screens. Could you explain that offensive strategy? as the inbound to Tyrese Williams. We'll get the stoppage and play a jump ball. So explain that strategy Yeah, yeah, bit. so five out, one in. Your big man, Kev, right here, he's setting screens um, for cutters. So Brennan Say will pass to the wing. He sets a screen right there, so UCL, UCLA screen, and he'll cut right down the middle. Um, and it's effective if it's run right. And I think that Quinnipiac really needs to see the weak side in that. McGuire's gonna try to take it oh himself, and God. it's a beautiful move. He can't finish, rebound Marfo, and a foul on the floor. What a move right there. That is not wow. easy. And it, you can just see how comfortable he is now. I mean, he's grown so much as a player from freshman to junior year. He, you can see how comfortable he is in his game. I don't think he would make that move when he was a freshman or even a sophomore. Tyrese Williams shooting free throws at 90% this year. Taking three, as Griffin said. Misses the first. You know, that's the second time you, I've you done keep, that. You keep the doing this, Ross. <laughs> you keep jinxing I did the it Bobcats to, from yeah, the charity strike. I did it from Brendan McGuire. Well, it's Already. okay because Eric Kerr jinxed me uh, last game. Oh, so, uh, Eric Kerr. <laughs> That's tough. Eric Kerr is in the building. <laughs> He's up there. He gave us a wave. He'll hear us in a couple seconds. <laughs> yeah, Eric Kerr, it's, it's the announcer's jinx. It's tough. I mean, I say he's been perfect from the line, then he misses both. <laughs> right now, Williams is one of two. Two of three. He'll take that all day. 52-48. Over to Pope. McKeithen thought about three. We get it down to James, and his mid-range shot is good, and the foul. I mean, where would Ryder be without James here today? I mean, he's just been so efficient shooting-wise and just making the biggest plays that Ryder could possibly have at the biggest moments. They would have 17 less points. That's where they'd be. The one thing Quinnipiac does, didn't do right right there is you cannot let the ball go to the high post in a zone. It automatically breaks it. I mean, you can see everything from the middle of the court. I mean, Ryder has taken so many shots from that charity strike. Mm -hmm. It's been pivotal. It's been pivotal in the game shift for sure. We mentioned in the first half, if we had one of those ESPN graphics that showed the hot spots on the floor, the free throw line would be red hot. Absolutely. Great look there from Brendan McGuire. Obviously, you've been saying it all night, but he's just so great at finding the open man and just you know knowing where his guys are on the court. Just as I mentioned, very high basketball IQ. Absolutely. I mean, his speed first and foremost. He's able to get to you know the free throw line in less than two seconds. I mean, he's just so quick, and and Quinnipiac needs that. But I also think Quinnipiac needs to run the floor a little better, and Brendan needs to see who's up ahead. Now, I'm not sure when the next media timeout is, but I would say that that is the most pivotal timeout in the game. Um, I say it to my teammates all the time. The media timeout is the turning point. I mean, it's the last five minutes of the game. Um, you know, that is when the momentum really starts to shift. Who's going to come out of the gates hot? It, it's a momentum changer for sure. Typically, the next media timeout is around three and a half to four minutes Perfect. left in the game. Yep. And those are the most pivotal four minutes of the game. That is really who's going to decide who wins and who loses. Ryder to inbound. And they're going to have to break a very intense full court press. Jeremiah Pope gets down. Cutting to Agamanu Johnson who throws it in. And a whistle immediately afterwards. But the momentum continuing for Ryder out of the timeout. 
I mean, look at look at the benches. I mean, Ryder's just up and at them, and uh, Quinnipiac's kind of a uh, too calm, too uh, too still right now. I'd have yeah, to say Quinnipiac very flat right now, and mm -hmm. Ryder just has insane momentum right now in a very pivotal part in the ball game. Absolutely. Is that something you'd get on your teammates about if you saw them not doing that? Absolutely. I mean, we thrive with our bench energy. Williams three won't go, wow. and that ball is going to be tapped in by I think Vaughn Demencio Vaughn going up for the rebound. So the points will still go to Williams as he was the last Bobcat to touch it. You know, we don't really have that issue in uh, women's <laughs> basketball as much. We're not uh, we're not up there as uh, as high as everybody else is. <laughs> it, it's true, but you're on the floor grabbing all the steals. That's true. That's true. So First one the to the floor wins the war. <laughs> exactly. Bobcats have been playing the same. Same up to eight guys pretty much the whole game. We got Kevin Marfo with 26 minutes. Matt Belonk leads the team with 28 minutes. McGuire, 26. Shinry, 25. These guys are playing a lot. It's fatigue. Baker claims it will not set in for these guys. But when you're playing that much minutes, that many minutes, it's tough. It is. It is. Uh, you know, it's hard when you get into conference. Um, you know, you go with your seven, eight, nine girls and guys that you trust who know the offense, know the defense, that run the plays, um, and that are going to make things happen. I think that's what Baker's sticking to, especially with J.J. Riggins out. I mean, he's been extremely pivotal in the last two games. Yeah, he came off a career high a couple games ago, 15 points off the bench. Elias King has been relied on instead. He's only played for eight minutes. He has, and you know what? He does a good job. He does a little bit of everything. Um, you know, he gets a one or two rebounds. He gets on the floor. He gets a kickball. I mean, he's just doing the dirty work. Desi Jones at the top of the key. Thought about taking it himself. Back over to Mapalong on the far side. Marfo resets. Rigoni, a deep contested three. Yes! Bobcats back on top. And Rigoni showing some emotion, retreating back to defense. 63-60. Huge three there from Rigoni. Bobcats needed it. When they have these timeouts kind of back to back to back and just maybe a minute and a half at most in between how much different or how much more information is put on you guys or how much more do you guys talk in that huddle yeah I mean a good chunk is given to rest I think you see that right now with Quinnipiac um, but a lot is just discussed within the players I mean a lot of times with guards and bigs we'll talk about screens and adjustments that we need to make on the fly um, and a lot of plays we come up with a lot of quick plays a lot of quick hits that we need to score right away um, you know, it's less flowing within the offense unless it's a transition steal and more about what plays we're running next. Very interesting. And so we always see Baker, he will start these longer timeouts talking with his coaching staff for probably 15 to 30 seconds, yep. and then he'll go in to the huddle. So you guys talk amongst yourselves for those first 30 seconds, yeah, and then yeah. in your case, Trish Fabry will come in or Baker Dunleavy comes in and but gives his two cents. That's so smart, though, because you want not only your coaching staff to be on the same page and the same plan, but then you're allowing your players to make adjustments on the fly that maybe the coaching staff has not seen. Now, in your guys' opinion, who do you get the ball to? Who's your decision-making, and who makes the basket? Well, right now, Kevin Marfo's got 13 points. Matt Belong's got 13 points. Rigoni with 11. I got to go Matt choices. here. Got to go Matt here. Matt Belong. Okay. Do you agree? I'd say give it to Matt. If he misses a shot, Marfo's underneath for the rebound anyway. It's a solid, sound Game plan from Mackenzie DeWeese. Marfo up top, finds Rigoni down low. Cross court pass is caught by Shinry over to Rigoni. Back over to Matt Belong, saves it from going out. He's going to try to take it up and under. He's fouled and the basket falls. Little kiss off the glass, the English there for Matt Belong, and he has a chance to convert the three point play and make this a two possession ball game for the Bobcats. With 2.03 left, it's Quinnipiac 65, Riders 62. Blanc at the line shooting one. You love players that are great with the media. Just makes our <laughs> job so much easier. Well, yeah, you guys give us good answers, win that, or lose. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping, hoping we do, is they give you stuff to run with and uh, enjoy the game and after it, you know? They have won it. They beat Ryder for the second time this year, 73-67. So final thoughts for you guys. Griffin, we'll start with you. Just a great game from the Bobcats, obviously. Jumped out to a very early lead, 33-19, to and then Ryder made a run of their own, but 
a great second half here for the Bobcats, showing a lot of resilience as they showed when they played Ryder at Ryder. Hey, Mackenzie, yeah. final thoughts? Yeah, look, Ryder stayed in it. They had a couple runs. Um, they came back a little bit and uh, kept Quinnipiac on their toes. But Kevin Marfo was really able to settle in on the, the offensive end and able to hit his free throws and be a presence in the lane. And that really was the X factor in this whole game. Yeah, Griffin, before the game, you wanted 15-15 from Marfo. You got 16-17. How about that? <laughs> Absolutely. He definitely heard me when, uh, when I made that prediction. Not too bad. All right, well, Mackenzie, thank you for joining us. This was a ton of fun. Good luck on Saturday. Thank you. No, thank you so much. It's been a blast. Absolutely. So for Griffin Cass, I'm Ross Meglin. Thank you for listening to Ryder versus Quinnipiac on QBSN. Again, Quinnipiac wins at 73-67.